Let's take a closer look at what we could learn from the F1 preseason test 2025 and let's see which interesting details we could spot. The three days in Bahrain have been eventful. On the first day they experienced a blackout, on the second day it rained in the desert and today a glass window from the race control stand fell on the track and shattered, which created the first red flag. When they restarted there was a quad somewhere on the track and they had to red flag again, although some cars were already on the track. And later, a bus drove through the runoff area in opposite direction, so there was another red flag. It seemed a bit headless today in the otherwise perfectly organized test. The test also revealed that the field is basically divided in three parts. The four front runners, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes, and the rest, while Sauber seems to drive at the very end. Sauber actually used the film day before the test, like any other team, but they did it with their old car, but new livery. The car was simply not done in time, and they only assembled it in Bahrain for the first time. When it was driving, they had problems with a wobbly DRS, Hülkenberg injured his eye when he watched the mechanics work, and they had a couple of technical issues which kept the car in the box. Now it seems like a good decision of science to choose Williams over Sauber but it's not a good sign for them one year ahead of becoming the Audi works team. And at the same time, they are opening another development office in the UK, which will be challenging in terms of internal communication. We could actually see some flow vis on their rear wing, which looks good. The flow stays attached all the way to the trailing edge and we see a V separation because of the DRS in the middle and they don't seem to work the flow too hard. At Williams, on the other hand, we could see some not ideal flow vis with early separations and hence cross flow. You can fix that with a bigger gurney flap, which is what teams are trying now. And interesting is the little support wing underneath, which can take stress off the rear wing suction side. The transition between suspension covers is often rubber and teams need to know how these rubber surfaces change during a lap, which could divert or even separate airflow. Williams used this chess pattern to analyze the behavior. Haas had an interesting bodywork failure, which we see every now and then. This always happens if bodywork parts are not perfectly aligned, screws are not fixed and airflow gets underneath the bodywork. Nice to see the internals and the size of the radiator flow path and people always ask, what's the bodywork's thickness? There you have it, 1mm without reinforcement, 5mm with reinforcement. Toro Rosso used some large rakes again to study the front flow patterns and the same did Red Bull because they tested a shorter nose and a new front wing. Of course Red Bull is good in taping all gaps again and we could see their driver cooling duct and we could also see their drink bottle connector which means the drink bottle is still in the nose. Another one of these new e tricks where the regulated weight distribution of the car is always fine when the car is checked, but it's different when the car is on track and the bottle is full. That's why they positioned it at the far end of the car. In general, we can see that more and more teams avoid using louvres and instead large rearward openings, as this is more efficient and doesn't disrupt the surrounding airflow as much. Alpine's rear wing looks pretty good, they work it pretty hard and the flow can almost stay attached until the end. And interesting is their huge center fan. You want to design this equipment in a way to obstruct the TV camera. So other teams cannot watch your settings before a session on the steering wheel. Alpine's solution even rests on the halo so the driver cannot get out. And the Enstone based team uses 3D printed Clino blocks to set up their front wing. Aston Martin did lots of rake work as well and it's great to see that they are still using their genius transducer case design which was copied across the pit lane and which the person who speaks to you right now designed a couple of years ago. Again, they came up with a great idea of this little slot which collects cockpit losses and hence cleans up the important downwash area to the back. This feature will probably be copied by other teams relatively quickly. And Aston Martin's diffuser looks a bit unusual with the larger keel underneath. Mercedes tested a very thin slot, showed us their front suspension and we could see their pressure tappings at floor and beam wing. At Ferrari we could see their side pod package left and right and they used an interesting metal sintered rake at the front wing ballast box to analyze the flow directions in different heights above the ground. 
McLaren optimized their bodywork to have a very small opening around the exhaust and hence guide more clean air to the back to generate more downforce, which doesn't just make you faster in corners, it also helps you to keep the tire wear low, which is their big advantage. Their bodywork is so tight that they created bumps around the parts underneath and to create flow paths for cooling air. Interesting from an aero design point of view is this little vein. It helps to keep the cockpit losses close to the center and prevents them from spilling down to the important downwashing area. Because the flow close to the headrest would separate earlier, because two boundary layers clash, they designed a slot to introduce fresh air from the pressure side. The transition between the two and one element part doesn't look ideal, as it will create separations itself, although this part is there to clean things up. It's usually better to join all three parts with a straight wall first and then fillet it. If you want, we can design such a feature in a better way together in another video. So I hope you found some of these details interesting and if you want to work in F1 as well, check out my online courses with the links below. Let me know who is your favorite for this year and see you at the next video.